This conference will now be recorded. So the first portion of the presentation, I'm just going to turn my camera off so that it will flow a little bit better. The first portion of the presentation will be some weed ID with control options of weeds common in the county, as well as some lookalike plants. And then the second portion, we will review some herbicide options, the Weed Control Act, and the differences between a weed report and a weed notice. Uh, we will also showcase our summer staff of 2021, our rental equipment, and county programs available. So here is orange hawkweed. It is a perennial weed that spreads mainly by seeds and also by its root system. The plant has leaves close to the ground called basal leaves, one solitary stem with multiple bright orange flowers. The entire plant is covered with long hairs. Meadow hawkweed is very similar to orange hawkweed, except it has bright yellow flowers, and the hairs on the flower tend to be a little bit darker. Hawkweeds can be difficult to control. Cultivation methods are ineffective because the root fragments cause new plants to sprout. Mowing the plant before flowering can help prevent seed production, but will not kill the plant. Hand digging can be effective, if all the root fragments are removed and Reclaim 2, Restore 2, and Navius are all registered for the use of hawkweed. Wild caraway. It is a biannual plant that has been elevated in Fraser County as a prohibited noxious weed. It is common in pasture lands and have carrot-like leaves with small white flowers. It is commonly um, used as a crop for seasonings, which is how it became invasive. Repeated cultivation, cultivation can be effective if done before seeding. After flowering, the plants are very fragile and the seeds scatter very easily. This causes mowing to be in a, in, an ineffective method of control because Oh, yes. And then because it acts like dandelion, it will rebloom under the cutting height, which is another reason why mowing is ineffective. Reclaim 2, Restore 2 are both registered for the use of wild caraway. <clears throat> Kosha has recently been elevated in Brazil County as a prohibited noxious weed. It is an annual plant that can mutate its seeds very easily and um, which becomes easily resistant to herbicides. Kosha in areas are resistant to group two and group four herbicides. One kosha plant can produce up to 25,000 seeds. In the fall, the plant dies and becomes a tumbleweed spreading its seeds everywhere. Kosha is commonly found in cropland because it is glyphosate resistant um, delay seeding and having a good crop rotation can help control the plant. There are also studies done that show having a zero tillage approach may help as well. Reclaim 2 is effective on non-resistant types of kochia and Restore 2 and Navius also work as well. Tall buttercup is a perennial weed that has deeply lobed leaves and produces a bright yellow waxy looking flower that are really, really small. This seed spread, or this, this weed, sorry, spreads by seed, each plant producing roughly 250 seeds. Um, tall buttercup is also toxic to livestock. It causes blisterings and is, <clears throat> makes it sensitive to the, to the sun. Plowing the field and planting an annual crop for several, several years can help control tall buttercup. 
Mowing and hand picking can be effective if done before plant flowers. Reclaim to restore to grazon and navias are all registered for the use on tall buttercup. If using grazon, spray at the high rate. Oxide daisy is a pretty weed that spreads quickly through the pasture lands. It has tooth lance shaped leaves and white petals with a yellow center. It reproduces via seed production and will die and grow back each year for several years. Repeated mowing can help prevent seed production, but it will cause the plant to continuously re-sprout. Hand pulling can be effective if done for multiple years. Reclaim to restore to Grazon and Navius are all registered to spray Oxide Daisy. White Cockle is a short-lived perennial. It is commonly found in hay fields and pastures. A lot of hay field seed mixes have white cockle in them, so be careful when purchasing um, seed mix for, for your hayland. Flowers are white with five notched petals and a very fleshy looking calyx. Um, we have a native plant in this area called night flowering catchfly that looks almost identical, but you can tell the difference because uh, night flowering catchfly, if you touch, if you touch the flower, it is uh, sticky, whereas white cockle is not. Um, frequent mowing can help reduce seed production in white cockle and reclaim to and navius are registered for the use or for the use of uh, white cockle. Um, cultivation is ineffective as it causes the new plants to be produced from the stems and the roots. Canna thistle. Uh, this has been on the Weed Control Act since since the beginning, so it's a very old and very commonly found weed. It is a, a perennial plant with a very intensive root system, and uh, because it can grow, it's invasive because it can grow almost anywhere. It has a very woody stem that branches at the top, and the leaves have spines on them. Um, flowers can range from white, pink, or purple. Um, luckily, there are a few control options for Canada thistle. Um, it can be controlled through grazing. Uh, sheep and goats are good at removing the stem, um, but that also can stimulate some regrowth. Um, repeated mowing can eventually deplete those the food reserves in the plant, uh, causing it to slowly die. And hand pulling repeatedly can um, help with control by stressing out the, the root system. Uh, thistle weevils can also be effective in biological control of Canada thistle and reclaim to restore to and graze on are all registered um, for, for thistle as well. Creeping bellflower. It is a perennial plant that reproduces by seeds and its intensive um, rhizomous root system. It prefers well-drained soils but can survive in any um, sun condition. It's commonly found in um, towns or hamlets, um, in, in people's gardens or flower beds. The stem is purplish to red when mature, and um, the leaves are more heart-shaped with toothed edges. Hand pulling and bagging flowers can be effective um, if it's done before blooming. It will help prevent the seeds from spreading. It is um, resistant to 2,4-D, but you can use dicamba to control creeping bellflower. So now we'll go through some lookalikes for um, some of the common weeds found in the county. So cow cockle and white cockle could be mistaken for each other. Uh, white cockle has a white flower 
whereas cow cockle has a pink flower. Um, white cockle tends to be more hairy, whereas cow cockle is hairless. And as you can see in these photos, cow cockle has a rib calyx right here, whereas white cockle has more of like a fleshy looking calyx and white cockle will have multiple stems and flowers coming out of one plant, whereas cow cockle will have one single stem with multiple flowers. Oxide daisy and Shasta daisy. Um, there is almost no difference between the two. Our rule of thumb is if it's spreading outside its um, designated area, then it is considered oxide daisy and um, it is required to be controlled. If it's Shasta daisy, it won't, it won't spread at all. While caraway and common yarrow can sometimes be mistaken for each other, um, they both have umbel shaped flower heads. Um, wild caraway has a true umbel, whereas a uh, common yarrow's flower head is not, not a true umbel shape. Um, wild caraway can be hairless, whereas common yarrow has hairs found on it. Common yarrow's uh, leaves tend to be more feathery looking whereas wild caraways have more of a carrot shape to them. The flowers on wild caraway have a green center, uh, whereas yarrow, the whole entire plant is uh, white. Yellow hawkweed and narrow leaves hawksbeard. So um, yellow hawkweed will just have one singular stem growing out from the plant. Its leaves will be um, basal, and will have no leaves on the stem. And that plant is always very hairy and has hairs on the entire plant. Uh, narrow leaf hawksbeard is branched quite extensively. Uh, it will have leaves coming out the entire stem. There will be no hairs on it and it will look like a branched giant dandelion. Uh, giant hogweed and cow parsnip. Giant hogweed isn't on a weed control act, but a lot of people are uh, concerned about it. It's found, it hasn't been found in Alberta. Um, there has been some cases of, of it in BC, but it is commonly mistaken for cow parsnip, which is native to this area. So giant hogweed will have um, red spots on the stem of the plant, which you can see in this photo right here along with some stiff bristles. Um, cow parsnip has no red spots. It does have some red in it, but no spots. And it has very soft, fuzzy hairs. And another key feature between the two is giant hogweed will have these deeply lobed, pointy leaves, whereas cow parsnips tend to be more softer edged and um, more round. Creeping bellflower and common bluebell. Common bluebell is a lot smaller plant, whereas creeping bellflower can get quite a bit taller. Uh, creeping bellflower, when mature, will have a red stem, whereas common bluebell uh, will always have a green, green stem. Um, the leaves on creeping bellflower are more heart-shaped, whereas um, bluebells are just, um, just lance-shaped. And it's hard to notice, but the flower stems on creeping bellflower are a lot shorter and the flowers are closer to the stem of the plant than on common harebell. And on common harebell, they'll, they'll um, lower and hang a lot, a lot lower on the, on the plant. So here's, oh, so do we have any questions? This is, uh, we have completed the weed ID portion of the of the presentation. If I don't see any questions, I will continue. So here are some herbicide options for farmers. Um, I'll talk about it a little bit later in the presentation, but we do have a herbicide rebate program um, that allows our landowners to spray herbicides and we will give them a rebate for that. 
Um, we will accept restore to, reclaim to, graze on, and navius uh, for our farmers. And I have just included the rates for each. So restore to, uh, generally you apply it to, uh, 140 to 240 liters um, per hectare and 100 liters of total spray solution. That's supposed to say milliliters, my apologies. Um, Reclaim to, uh, you apply it at 145 to 170 milliliters per hectare and 100 liters per hectare of total spray solution. Um, it does require to have a surfactant with that as well. A uh, graze on, you apply at 2.47 to 2.67 liters per hectare in 100 to 200 liters per hectare of total spray volume. And Navius, we spray at 167 grams per hectare in 100 liters per hectare of total spray solution. Um, Navius also requires, requires a surfactant. Um, if you have any questions about um, herbicides, feel free to give me a call or um, your local herbicide retailer and we can help you figure out exactly um, how much herbicide you need and how to mix it and stuff like that. For our acreage owners, um, we allow them to spray for the herbicide rebate, allow them to spray 2,4-D and PAR-3. So for 2,4-D, you apply four liters per hectare and 100 to 300 liters per hectare of total spray solution. And for PAR-3, you apply 5.5 liters per hectare and 300 liters per hectare of water. I'm just going to quickly go over a little bit of the on the Weed Control Act. Um, anyone can access it on Google, and it actually is a really good resource um, to read through. It just kind of talks about what the Weed Control Act is, um, why we have inspectors, what our duties are, and things like that. So it's one of Alberta's oldest pieces of legislation. Um, it started in 1907. It um, designates the local authority, so Brazu County. Um, it makes us responsible for administration and enforcement on the acts and regulations. It is initially implemented to protect agricultural production, but was updated in 2010 to also include natural and riparian areas. So in the Weed Control Act, uh, it states that landowners must control noxious weeds and they must destroy prohibited noxious weeds. I just want to quickly go over the difference between a weed report and a weed notice. Um, I find that a lot of our landowners call us concerned because they think that they got a weed notice, um, but it's actually just a weed report. So as a weed inspector, we are required to send out an inspection, um, an inspection report once we have completed an initial inspection on the property. So once an inspection is done, every person will get a, a weed report. It will be mailed out um, and it will include a letter and some fact sheets on the weeds that have been found. If no weeds are found, then we won't send a weed report. Um, weed notices are uh, sent out when the landowner is non-compliant. They will be mailed and hand or hand delivered and posted on um, the property. And they will also include a due date that the control needs to be done. After that due date, enforcement will be taken. So here is on the left is what a, an inspection report will look like, and on the right is what a, a weed notice will look like. So um, they're quite different. Sometimes they have similar information, but a weed report will have a picture of the property, will have um, every inspection that has been done, as well as the landowner's information. And it will normally say in the notes, it will have a description of exactly maybe where the weeds were found and 
the contact person or the inspector name so that you can contact them. And the, the photo will also include like a polygon, which will show you on the aerial photo where the weeds have been located. So the jobs of a weed inspector are to inspect, um, inspect public, private lands. And we also inspect all of our Brazy County lands as well. Um, once they do that, they will complete a weed report they will send a friendly letter um, and mail it to the, to the landowner. They will also try to make, if they have our contact information, they'll, they'll give you a call or send you an email. And um, hopefully you can kind of make a plan with the weed inspector um, on doing some control on your property. Here are our weed inspectors for the summer. Um, each, our county is divided up into four areas, so each inspector has their own area. Um, three of them are returning, so you've probably seen them out and about before. And we have one, one new lead inspector, and we're really looking forward to the summer, for sure. Uh, here are our sprayer operators. Um, landowners probably don't deal with them too, too often. Um, we, one of them will have, will be in the spray truck I'm spraying all of our roadside ditches. And then we'll, we have two operators that go around and um, do our hawkweed program and spray all of our county property if need be and um, do any spot spraying that is required. Um, here at Brazil County, we have an extensive um, rental equipment program. Uh, we have a large variety of spray equipment that is available to rent. And if you have or are planning on spraying any noxious or prohibited noxious weeds, you are actually able to rent that equipment for free. So that's kind of nice. Um, if you are looking at renting any equipment, contact Amber. So we have a few county programs. Um, we have our no spray program, which people can apply for, and um, we won't spray their county ditches along their property. And then we also have our hawkweed program, uh, which individuals can apply for, and we will come out and spray any hawkweed found on their property um, up to five acres for free. And then we have our herbicide rebate program as well. So if you uh, buy some herbicide that are that's um, on the list, so uh, graze on, restore to, reclaim to, navius, or if you're an acreage owner and aren't able to access those herbicides, either 2,4-D or PAR-3 as well, then you can submit your, the application um, and attach the receipt of your herbicide. And we will give you a rebate of 50% up to sixteen hundred dollars so anyone who um, has a rebate of more than sixteen hundred dollars will be um, we'll just keep them behind and if there's any leftover funds at the end of the year then those funds will be evenly distributed to the individuals that that sprayed more than than thirty two hundred dollars Um, this is our egg department and our contact information. So if you have any questions or concerns about weeds, herbicides, any weed complaints, um, give myself a call. If you want to talk and have some questions about rental equipment, give Amber a call. And all other inquiries, um, talk to Nancy. Are there any questions? No? No one has any questions? Yes, I actually have one right here with me. Nancy just commented saying that we have Weed ID book, booklets that are available for free. Um, so anyone that would like one, stop by the county office and you can pick one up. It has 
um, a list of every single uh, weed that's on the Weed Control Act that has its identification and stuff like that. It's actually a very handy little book. Any other questions or comments? Okay, well, I just want to thank everyone for joining. I hope you all have a great day.